we'll be creating an InDesign document for the purpose of organizing your research. So <clears throat> once you've opened up um, InDesign, we go to File, New Document. Um, we'll start with a number of pages, one, and just take off the tick from facing pages. We just want a single page, not a spread. And page size A3. And let's have a look. Uh, number of columns, let's put four columns. Uh, the gutter, that's fine. Margins, we can bring them, the margins around the edge of the paper down, say, to eight. Um, if the link is on, it'll change all the uh, margins at the same time. And that's pretty good. So we've got um, four columns, A3 format. What we need to do now is put some boxes in here, um, some rectangles to place our images later. So um, we can start uh, by going to the side menu on the left and the rectangle with an X through it is what we want. Select that then come across and just drag um, box. Now the proportions of this box are very squarish. Look, it doesn't really matter what um, proportions the, uh, these boxes are because whatever image you have to put into this will be different in any case. So this is simply a placeholder until you um, put your images and change it again. So we need now to just duplicate this one box. We can do this very quickly by going to what's known under edit as step and repeat and I'll just show you what step and repeat does step and repeat simply takes and uh, copies that particular object in an offset vertically or horizontally so um, we'll do this first um, horizontally but they're too far apart so we can bring that down that's about right Okay, 71 horizontal offset, but we want four of these boxes. So we go to the count and just put a third one in place, and there it is. Okay, and then we select the black arrow. Um, we select all four boxes, go back to edit, step and repeat. And uh, this time we don't want horizontal, we want vertical offset. So that's a zero for the horizontal and I don't know um, let's start with 71 again and see what happens don't press return because we don't know whether that's oh yeah it looks right but we need more than four we need uh, an extra one here and there it is so we've got now that looks pretty good okay so now we have um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. We've got 20 boxes. Now, um, there's no way in the world you could squeeze in annotation when the whole page is filled with this. So um, that doesn't quite work for us. So let's reorganize it slightly. Let's um, say we'll have 16 boxes instead of 20. Let's get rid of one set. Now, if you knew ahead of time what it was that you wanted to do, it'd be good. We're just um, just playing around with what is possible. And um, I'm just using the black arrow to select a whole bunch of these at the same time. And just I'm just reorganizing them in order to create space beneath them um, to have um, annotations fitting. So we've got our spaces for our annotation, we've got our uh, boxes for the image, we need a heading up the top. And um, we can now go to the text tool, 
the type tool and just drag a little box and in that box you can uh, type preferably I'm going to go for all caps um, and it's the default is about I think 12 point now you want that to be larger um, but I'll show you how to save this as a um, as a what's known as a paragraph style um, this will be automatically automatically visible if you've already chosen um, the setting up the top here changing it from essentials to advanced always work in advanced um, because you get a lot more options in the menus so we've selected advanced therefore the paragraph um, tool will be visible in the the right side menu right so we're in the paragraph styles we'll go down to the bottom here make a new um, style so paragraph style one double click on that and this uh, dialog box opens up give it a name I'm going to call this my heading and um, I go to basic character styles and choose mm, for now I'm going to select Arial it's a fairly universal and safe um, typeface um, and bold and I think I'll go 36 point and because preview has been selected down the corner here uh, you can see what's happening okay uh, that's basically it except for um, we would like to uh, the alignment so you go indent and spacings and select center there we go okay then so there's our heading there's our page ready to go the only time really you should be using a display font a fancy font um, is in the heading so if you don't like Arial, if you want to go a little fancy, um, you could, but this is the only time you, you could do it. Um, every other time you use any other type, it should be readable, legible, a serif or a sans serif. But uh, a display font in this case is quite appropriate. So I might just change this, go back to my heading, um, and I think go back to basic character um, and something a little fancier where's Bauhaus there's Bauhaus there you go uh, notice that uh, it's a little smaller uh, the Bauhaus X height so um, you might want to boost up the size and of course if I went too big and my text box was too small I will lose it and you'll notice that's a little plus sign it's saying make the box bigger otherwise just come back I'll show you what happens okay. uh, so my in is 51 point Bauhaus okay and you can't see it because of the text box is too small make it a little larger bingo okay um, let's give it a little bit more space between each of these boxes a bit more room for annotation and also um, you'll be guillotining um, the edges because this has to fit into your visual diary you're not cutting out individual images <laughs> you're simply trimming um, the page so you can actually glue that into your visual diary okay so how do we go about now putting images into these boxes simple so select one um, command D otherwise file place command D okay so what happens now um, so when, when you put an image in InDesign you don't actually 
embed the image, you are simply putting a thumbnail in its place. So I've got a whole bunch of images on Swiss Design. I, um, I've organized it by name so I know what I want. I've even numbered them so I know how many there are. So I know I have 16 boxes. So I'm going to select 16 um, images and open. So one, two, three, four. So I, I'm just going to place all the images in the boxes. Now the first thing you'll notice is um, uh, you got these huge crops of the image itself. So what happens is initially is what you what you're actually uh, are pasting in or what you're placing um, is the full size of that image. So we've pasted in. Sorry, we placed our images into their boxes. We now have to uh, fit the image proportionally into that uh, into that box. So we go to fitting, fill frame, uh, fits content, sorry, <laughs> fits content proportionally. We go click and now it's taken the maximum available to it, which is the height. Um, the a shortcut for this is a second little uh, box that you want to click on and it just automatically gives you the maximum height to width without distorting the image of course um, but we can speed this whole process up by selecting everything and just going click and then to make the frame fit the content go right click fitting um, fit frame to content so it reduces the frame to the dimensions of the image that you placed. Another way of doing this would be to, if I can just zoom in for you, um, select one of the images, go to the quarter and double click. And that reduces the frame exactly to the dimensions of the image. Okay, let's go back again. and right click fitting fit frame to content right up. so um, we have a nice grid of images um, the idea here is that you group your research according to similarity the logic behind an image box uh, is that there are two separate things you have to consider one is the image the other is the box so if I double click inside the box, you'll get, you'll, you'll actually isolate um, the image, not the box. So I can actually do things to the image. I can, you know, I can move it within the box. What falls outside the box gets cropped out. Now you can use this, to, use this later on to your advantage to do, zoom in to something interesting that you want to emphasize. So, um, also, uh, a quick way of, of isolating the image is by using the white arrow. Okay, I think I'm talking too long now. So, um, uh, look, there's more to learn about this, but this will have to do as your beginning point.